Welcome to UTC AI Studio, AI powered, creativity fueled. Have you ever watched a robot in a video game and wondered how it got so smart? Or thought about how a self-driving car learns to navigate a tricky intersection? It's not always about a programmer writing millions of lines of code for every single possibility. A lot of the time it's about learning from trial and error. You know, kind of like we do? Well, today we're going to dive into that amazing world of reinforcement learning. And the big question, how can you get a machine to explore a brand new world, figure out what works and what doesn't, and get better over time all by itself? It all comes down to this really powerful feedback loop of actions and consequences. To really wrap our heads around this, let's follow a little hero on a quest. Our hero is a simple agent and its big challenge is to solve a maze. Here's the catch. It has no map, no instructions. All it can do is try stuff and learn from what happens. But before our hero can start his journey, we've got to meet the key players. We need to understand the basic rules of the game it's playing. First up, we have the agent. This is our learner, the one calling the shots. In our main story, it's this little robot. But in the real world, an agent could be anything really. A self-driving car, a dog, an algorithm playing chess, you name it. The agent doesn't just exist in a vacuum, it operates inside an environment. This is its world, its playground, the whole shebang. For our little robot, the environment is the maze itself. All the open paths, the dead ends and those pesky walls. At any given moment, the agent finds itself in a specific state. Just think of it like a snapshot of its current situation. For our maze runner, the state is super simple. It's just its exact location, it coordinates inside the maze. And from any state, from any spot in that maze, the agent can take an action. These are the choices it has. For our hero, it's straightforward. It can move up, down, left or right. That's it. And here is the absolute key to everything. The reward. After every single action, the environment gives the agent some feedback. Maybe it's a huge positive reward for finally reaching the goal. Or it could be a negative penalty for bumping into a wall. This feedback system is literally how it learns what to do and what to avoid. Another example could be training a dog. You don't hand your puppy a textbook on the philosophy of sitting. Right. When the dog happens to do the right thing, it sits. It gets a reward, a treat. And over time, it builds this connection. It understands that when it does this action, it gets that treat. That simple feedback loop, that idea of learning from rewards. That is the absolute heart of reinforcement learning. How does learning actually happen? Well, it happens through this constant trial and error loop. You can think of it like the agent's own personal training montage where it's on a quest for knowledge. This is the engine that drives it. First, the agent looks around. It observes its current state. Then it picks an action based on its current strategy, which we call a policy. It acts and the environment gives it a reward or a penalty. Based on that feedback, the agent updates its strategy and then it repeats it all over again and again and again. Thousands, maybe millions of times. That's how it builds mastery. Let's see this in action. In the very beginning, our agent is totally clueless. During its first try, its first episode, its path is just chaos. It's moving randomly, bumping into walls with absolutely no idea of what it's doing. It's pure exploration. Okay, let's go fast forward to episode 100. Now things are looking a little different. The agent has learned a few things. It's starting to figure out which moves are bad and it's kind of heading in the right direction, but it's still making mistakes, still taking wrong turns. It's better for sure, but it's not perfect. And after 5000 episodes, bam, the agent has found the optimal path. It has learned to perfectly balance exploring new routes with exploiting the ones it knows work best. It didn't just find a path, it found the best path. It has officially solved the maze. And hey, if these videos help you understand AI better, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming deep dives. Solving a maze is pretty cool thing. But obviously this technology goes way beyond that. But where does technology actually pop up in our lives? Let's take a look at some of the real world places where reinforcement learning is having a massive impact. Robotics is one of the biggest. I mean, instead of trying to program a robot arm for every single possible movement, you can create a digital version of it in a simulation. There it can try and fail thousands of times to learn how to pick up an object or how to walk without breaking anything expensive. Once it figures it out in the virtual world, that knowledge gets beamed over to the real world robot. Self-driving cars are another huge one. The real world is just impossibly complex. So by combining reinforcement learning with deep learning, a technique called deep reinforcement learning, the car's AI can learn from millions of simulated miles. 
It processes tons of data from its sensors and learns how to make these incredibly complex split-second decisions, all guided by rewards for driving safely and efficiently. And of course, gaming. You've definitely heard about AI mastering insanely complex games, like chess or Go. That's reinforcement learning. The agent literally learns by playing against itself for thousands of years worth of games. But here's the cool part. That exact same technology is used to create hyper-personalized experiences for you. Let's say while shopping in Amazon or watching movies on Netflix, this same technology recommends what next to watch or to buy based on the reward of you clicking on it. It's also helping machines learn super precise movements for building things in factories and even being used to optimize huge industrial processes and create personalized learning programs that adapt to you. That feedback an agent gets generally comes in two main flavors. You've got positive reinforcement, which is like giving it a treat for doing a good job. This really allows the agent to maximize its performance. Then there's negative reinforcement, which is more about avoiding something bad like an electric shock or a penalty. This makes sure the agent learns to meet at least a minimum standard. So where does all this learning data come from? Well, with online RL, the agent learns live interacting in real time. Think of a video game AI that's adapting to your every move. But with offline RL, it learns from a big static data set that's already been collected. This is crucial for situations where mistakes are a big deal. I mean, you wouldn't want medical AI learning by trial and error on real patients. Right, offline is way safer when the stakes are high. Now, you might be thinking, is this the only way machines learn? And the answer is no, not at all. It's really important to know that reinforcement learning is just one of three major ways we teach AI. So let's quickly put it in context. This table really breaks it down. With supervised learning, you're basically giving the AI an answer key, a massive data set where all the correct answers are already labeled. Think, this is a cat or this is a dog. With unsupervised learning, you give it the data, but no answers, and you just ask it to find interesting patterns on its own. Reinforcement learning, it's a totally different beast. There is no data set to start with. The agent creates its own data as it goes, learning purely from the consequences of its actions in the world. Now, as incredible as reinforcement learning is, it's definitely not a magic wand for every problem. So it's really important we take a balanced look here at both its amazing power and its potential pitfalls. On the plus side, the advantages are just huge. Reinforcement learning can solve ridiculously complex problems that other methods can't touch. It adapts on the fly to new situations and you don't need to hand feed it perfectly labeled data. And maybe the coolest part, it can discover totally new creative strategies that a human might never even think of. It's a real engine for innovation. But there are some serious hurdles. Reinforcement learning can be a beast, requiring massive amounts of data and computer power. And designing that reward system is tricky. If you get it wrong, the agent might learn to do something completely bizarre. There's this famous story of an AI that was supposed to win a boat race, but it figured out it could get more points just by driving in circles, hitting bonus targets, instead of ever finishing the race. And of course, when you're talking about real-world robots, you must make sure they can learn safely without, you know, breaking things during that trial and error phase. Plus, these systems can sometimes be a black box, where they make brilliant decisions, but we have no idea why. It's a powerful tool, no doubt, but one you must use carefully. Which brings us to a final thought. Our little agent learned to solve a maze. Bigger, more complex agents are mastering games and running factories. So the real challenge isn't just building a smarter AI. It's about defining the right goals in the first place. As we give machines this credible power to learn for themselves, we must be extremely careful about what we are asking them to achieve. The future of this tech really depends on the wisdom of the rewards we design. Thanks for watching UTC AI Studio, AI powered, creativity fueled. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, as always, keep learning, keep building, and keep creating with AI.